Yeah. What up? What it do? Man, you know what it do. You know what it do well, man. And uh, here we are in beautiful Monterey, California, just chilling up here for the festival. Yep. Um, I have so much that I want to talk to you about, man. It's just you, you're such a special cat to me, man. Well, the feeling's mutual. You've always been like the most gracious guy in the business, man. And, and all of that love comes through your playing, too. Well, thank you, man. I appreciate that. Well, you know, back in the, I guess it was the 80s, they talked about uh, young lions and things like that. But you, you still as ferocious as back then. <laughs> and now you like, you like Father Brown, man. Oh, so, boy. So, so talk about the transition and how now you have some young burners in your band. Well, you know, it's funny, this, this, this whole Young Lions thing that started in, well, it didn't start because uh, there was a record in the early 60s on VJ called The Young Lions, which had Lee Morgan and Bobby Timmons, and uh, you know, they were the Young Lions of their time. But within a couple of years, they just started acknowledging them as great players. It had yeah. nothing to do with their age. Right. It took 20 years for people to stop calling us young lions. People like, you know, Roy Hargrove, Joshua Redman. It's just like we were forever 20. <laughs> you know, and actually I saw a uh, record release. Well, I'm sorry, not a record, you know, see? But young lions don't say <laughs> records. Um, but I saw a, uh, a review of, of a recent recording of mine, and it said something like, uh, you know, Young Lion, Christian McBride. I was oh, like, dang, no, no, they still no. doing that? No, no, no. Now, I realize that almost in any uh, profession in the world, at age 43, you, you know, people say, okay, you know what you're doing. You've been around for a minute. <laughs> but in jazz, nah. He, he's an artist who's just finding his voice. Oh, no, you know? no, no. So, no but no. Know. It has been a, um, a, a trip from this transition to now being the mentor and band leader to young up, up and coming musicians like Warren Wolf and Christian Sands and Ulysses Owens. And uh, I meet young musicians now that will say something like, uh, you know, Mr. McBride, my mother bought me your first CD when I was nine. <laughs> and then I start doing the math and I go, that would be about right. I was like, how old are you? And it's like, oh man, that's a trip. So, you know, my mother always warned me that transition, you wouldn't see it coming. It'll yeah, just, yeah, yeah. you know. It'll just show up. It'll just show up. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but it's fun, man, because it's now time for musicians of my generation to do for the younger generation what older generation musicians did for us. Yeah, man. You Everybody's know? a baby Blakey now. That's right. That's yeah. right. Or, or they, they should learn, they should be learning how to be. You know? And the thing that's so beautiful that's always really happened in the music is how the cats that have been in the game for a while always have something to teach the younger cats. Oh, yeah. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, the younger cat taught the older cat. That's right. right. And, it's, and, and it just proves what you just said, that it's about the level of talent and musicianship, yeah. you know, not necessarily about the age box. That's they, right. They, they love young virtuosos because that's something that they can put out there. Yep like that. That's right. I, I look at, you know, you mentioned Art Blakey, who was uh, one of the most celebrated and greatest mentors and teachers this uh, music has ever known. And uh, you think about how he gave his younger musicians uh, a way to not just flourish as instrumentalists, but also as composers, as arrangers. And by the same token, Art Blakey was staying uh, current with the pulse of the current generation. He was learning new things, new sounds, because these guys were uh, bringing the sound of their generation and mixed that in with Art Blakey's history and his experience. And then you got this great uh, everlasting school known as the Jazz Messengers. Yeah, you know? yeah that's awesome. Man. Yeah. Well, talk about your messengers, man. You got Christian Sands and Ulysses Owens Jr. Killing it, man. You, you guys just look so happy out there together playing that great music. Yeah, we we've uh, we, we did our first trio tour, I believe it was in 2010, and uh, we put out out here our CD two years ago, and the new CD Live at the Village Vanguard just came out yesterday, mm. and uh, it's been a wonderful run with the trio. Uh, both of those guys are now starting to get some momentum going with their own projects. You know, Christian, of course, was here last night doing the Errol Gardner tribute. Right. 
and uh, he's been a little doing some some things on his own with some projects of his. But uh, um, I'm going to try to keep him as long as I can. Yeah. You know, the 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 goal is not to you know I don't want to wear out the tire so to speak, because uh, the goal is to let him stay in this trio, learn something, and then go out there and fly. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I like Christian a lot because he's also been playing with a lot of other people when I'm not working with the trio. So he's getting a lot of experience. And the same goes for Ulysses. Uh, in, in fact, Ulysses is uh, almost exclusively doing his own projects these days. Mm. Uh, he uh, Earlier this year, uh, he started getting a lot of offers to do a lot of other things. So he's uh, he's now his own leader now, you know. Um, well, it's kind of a trip because you know it's. I remember when Terrence had all these cats in his band, right? And Herbie and everybody's looking at his band. It's like, hey, don't touch my guitar player. Don't touch. Right. And then they get, <laughs> whoop, they get they get snatched That's up. That's what happens. That's what happens. But to have the young guys, you know, they're in a position where man, it's happening right now. Yeah. I'm playing with Christian, which is a great gig for them. But it's like, it's also, all right, well, I want to do my thing, so how I leave my main gig to do my own thing. You got to have a lot of, you got to have a lot of confidence and a lot of energy to know that this yes. is it for me and this is the time, yes. and it's time to fly. Yeah, and, and I wish him luck. You know, I mean, uh, you got to always support your brethren. You yeah, know what I mean? Course. You got to always got to support them. And uh, I have the wonderful Jerome Jennings playing in the trio now, and uh, we're going to start going on the road uh, to support the CD, uh, like in another two weeks, mm. and so uh, it, it's it's been a lot of fun playing with that trio, and also before that playing with Inside Straight, which yeah. was sort of a mixture of uh, like my older brothers Steve Wilson and Carl Allen, and then uh, Warren Wolf, who was like the young lion when I, I first I remember. when he first joined the band, yeah. and uh, the piano chair was. I, I always like to joke. I think every professional jazz pianist in in the whole scene played with Inside Straight at some point. Oh, that's awesome! Man. <laughs> we had about fifteen different piano players uh, coming in and out of that band. So, uh, Inside Straight was almost like my version of the Jazz Messengers for a piano player. <laughs> you know? I mean, off the top of my head, let me see: it was Eric Reed, Peter Martin, Christian Sands, Gerald Clayton, uh, Andy Langham. Mark Carey, um, Cyrus Chestnut. Oh my goodness! Uh, who else played piano? What's that seven Nailed so down? far? <laughs> no, no. I, I couldn't get him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there's some more. To, oh, uh, uh, Brandon Coleman. Oh yeah, oh Brandon. Uh huh. Oh uh, so that's eight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of piano players came in and out of that. But just band. look how that changes the magic of the sound. It changes Absolutely. the game a little bit every time, and I know you got to get a little piece of every one of those. Absolutely, and and, and it was it's been as, as a musician to hear everybody's different approach to the same tune. Uh, it's always fascinating, yeah. you know. And uh, when Steve Wilson couldn't play, I would usually get Jaleel Shaw mm -hmm. to sub for him. Jaleel, uh, my homeboy from Philly, uh, I believe Jaleel is 37 now. I think that's how old he is. These cats are getting older. I know. So when I first met him, he was eight, nine years old. And he had just started playing alto saxophone. Oh, my goodness. And, uh, you know, he used to look up to me and Joey DeFrancesco and, and Ord Evans. We were like his big brothers, you know. Yeah. And now look at him. Jaleel Shaw is like, you know, every time I see him play with Roy Haynes or, or whoever, I'm just like, yeah, wow. that's my boy. I knew it. I knew it today. <laughs> that's right. <laughs>